Previously on Cirque Stories, we shared Maxime Fomichov's inspiring journey as a clown from the USSR to Cirque du Soleil. If you missed last week's episode, click the link in the description below. But don't go anywhere, because a new episode of Cirque Stories is about to start. Commitment, passion, performance, countless hours of training. These are just a few of the things our dreams are made of. We are Cirque du Soleil artists, and we all have a story to tell. Behind the scenes, behind the makeup and all the costumes, this is unfiltered, raw, like you've never seen before. Welcome to Cirque Stories. You probably know him as the Redbird at Mystere. I'm Christina Jones, and I'm your host for Cirque Stories. We had a chance to sit down with Ross Gibson at his place to peel back the curtain to get a taste of what his life looks like offstage. Okay, so um, tell me a little bit about your sports background. So I come from the sport of tumbling, which is a, a discipline of uh, gymnastics. Uh, competed from 97 until 2003 on the Great Britain teams. How was the transition from sport to circ performance? It's funny, when you do sport, you put all your focus into one competition, that might be world or European championships, uh, and it's, it's that one competition, uh, maybe you have them three months apart, that you have to shine in. Whereas on stage, you've got to shine every night, so you've got to manage to, instead of pulling all that talent for one competition, to try and uh, blend it and spread it, so it covers your 478 shows a year instead of your won world championships and European championships. I have a bit of the, uh, the, the age-old story of, I saw my first Cirque show at the Royal Albert Hall and... Uh, what was it, do you remember? It was uh, uh, Kidam. Okay. Kidam at the Royal Albert Hall uh, in, ugh, I wanna say like 96 or something. Went with some friends from gymnastics and was just hooked and thought, this is where I want to be. That, that, is, that is what I want to do. And I have to tell you, every time I see Mister, I'm just amazed at your artistic ability and also your technical ability. Um, what did Cirque do to foster that growth? How did you learn to get into this character so much? Um, I think when Cirque picks uh, people for characters, they, they often look at the person's personality as well as what their uh, acrobatic or dance or acting skills are. Redbird is a very a graceful and acrobatic uh, role. I obviously have come from a big acrobatics background and I had a dance background as well, so it's, it's kind of uh, the perfect amalgamation of, of, of my two main skills. And how many years have you been the Redbird? Uh, 13 now. Tell me a little bit about the family you started here. When did you meet your husband? So I met my husband, he was performing in O. He was a, an original uh, performer in O, which I think you know that show quite well as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a water show. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, he was a performer in O, uh, original synchronized swimmer, and we got married two years ago, uh, September 17th, that was my birthday. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> September 17th, yeah, so a, a, a year and a half ago. Okay, and so when did you decide that you wanted to have kids? I think that was from seeing that other performers uh, in Cirque shows were doing it and successfully having kids and performing in shows and it wasn't affecting their stage performance and it was, it was beautiful to see. But we wanted to try a surrogate route and then uh, a very good friend of ours uh, called Alison who used to be with me in Mystere and her husband is a rigger on car. Uh, she, when we had so suddenly realized we needed an oven yeah. And that was actually a lot, lot harder to find. She very graciously stepped up and said she would try and everything went perfectly. So we actually uh, went through an egg donor, an anonymous egg donor, who strangely looks really like you, which we just discovered. <laughs> it's not me, it's not me. <laughs> Our daughter just looked at her and went, Mama, uh, how do you know? You didn't secretly give your eggs three years ago? <laughs> no. Because that would be a great twist on this <laughs> Wouldn't story. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we went through an anonymous egg donor and um, uh, took the eggs and split them and fertilized uh, one side with Ben and one side with me. Instead of going paper, scissors, stones, you're the dad. Mm -hmm. uh, we told the doctor, look, you just choose and um, never tell us unless we really need to know for some reason. So, And to this day, we still don't know, but it doesn't matter. She's our baby. Right. 
it was great for us to just be able to hang out and, and watch and watch this happening. And yeah, nine months later, on August 21st, Ciela was born. And as ex as expensive as it was to uh, for us to go through um, uh, to go through that process, um, I guess it's not quite as simple for us. It was the best money I've ever spent. So we've ever spent. Right. Sorry. Every night, people come from all around the world to see you perform on stage, and they think of you as this character. But you're also a husband, you're also a father. So tell me a little bit about what it's like to manage those two personas you have. Um, it, it's tough, but we're, we're at the age, Ciela is uh, two and a half years old, so she, she's not on a schedule we need to adhere to at the moment. She doesn't have to get up for school, so it's going to get harder when she goes to school, and that's when I think uh, performers who are parents uh, do find more difficulties when their children are at school all day. So do you see Ciela following your footsteps and performing? Um, I definitely don't want to be a, a, a stage dad where I... Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, look, here she is. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, she, can, she can dress how she wants. I would never push her to, uh, to, do, to do anything. I'm not the type of stage dad who's going to uh, force her in any way. If you had no worries, all the money in the world, uh, no health problems, no responsibilities, no worries at all, what would you do? Charity work. Uh, my husband and I actually do a lot of uh, charity work here in Vegas um, for a cause that uh, we're very we're very connected to. I would fully throw myself into the philanthropy world. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Every family has a different makeup, but the common thread across the board is love. And in the end, love always wins. Hi there. Thanks for watching this episode of Cirque Stories, and I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the things that you'd like to know about Cirque artists? And remember, you can always catch me on the O stage at the Bellagio on the Las Vegas Strip, and you can actually buy tickets right now by clicking on the link. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss the next episode of Cirque Stories. Believe me, you're not going to want to miss this one. I had so much fun because I was interviewing the kids that are in the Beatles' love. Be sure to check out more information and links below. See you next time.